Hey guys, Vegan Mr. RV here, back to another video, and today I'm back with some more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Excuse me. In the last episode, we went into our second day of trial trying to figure out what exactly happened at the police department and the evidence room in the police department. And we figured out that the person who was quote unquote murdered slash attacked Mike Meekins was actually not Detective Goodman. Or at least there's no way of knowing for sure that it was Detective Goodman because Detective Goodman had his ID stolen. That was one of the bases for assuming that it was Goodman. Can't see his face? If he uses a stolen ID card, it's definitely not him. So, we still aren't sure exactly what happened in that evidence room. So, before we went into recess, we called in Mr. Jake Marshall for testimony. And that's what we're about to go into right here, now that we're back from the recess. I might even come back. Oh, right, during the recess, Detective Dick Gumshoe delivered us the files for the SL9 case. In those files, we found out that... Pretty much every single person involved with this case, except for Phoenix Wright and Mike Meekins, were involved in the SL9 case two years ago, including both Lana and Emma. Those SL the SL9 case was also known as the Joe Dark Killings, which seemed to trigger a memory for Emma, and then she ran out of the courtroom crying. So, clearly there's something that, uh, that's like some sort of core memory for her, some sort of traumatic memory for her. But either way, we are going to call, or at least Miles here, is going to call Mr. Jake Marshall to the stand. Are we going to hear his theme? Are we going to hear his theme? I want to hear his theme. There it is. I love his theme so much. Like, there's really no reason for me to like it. No, that's a lie. I, I really like it. I really do. Like, sometimes I get annoyed by Jake Marshall just because it's like, oh yeah, this guy's trying to be like a stereotypical Texan and is definitely not a Texan at all. Or at least, you know, not a Texan from my part of Texas. Uh, he's definitely trying to play the more Texas cowboy sort of thing. Which, you know, if you want to find those, go up to Austin. Anyways, I've kind of missed the entirety of this dialogue here. I wasn't reading any of it. But from what I assume, Jake Marshall just introduced himself and confused like half the courtroom and Miles had to translate. I think that's about what happened here. Uh... A Despera what? Wait, hold on, what what was the question? I didn't read any of the dialogue, I was just kind of auto-scrolling through all of that. Wow, okay. I didn't read any of the dialogue, but, we're, but I think we're about to start Marshall's testimony in plain old English. Okay, yeah, sure. Make sure you tell him to speak in plain old English. Yeah, I didn't read any of that dialogue, probably should've, that's my bad. My job was to keep a wary eye on that bone over to. They said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. Besides, the rules protected by two security systems anyway. If I remember right, I was at the street side saloon at the time I went down. I'm just an innocent traveling man, so if you're out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. So that's like as layman's term as he can get, but okay. I can't say I particularly care for your attitude. I can't say I care for your beer, but you don't see me complaining. Wait a minute. What do you mean by two security systems? I mean the security cameras and the ID card reader. I reckon even a cowpoke like you knows about those. Yes, well, what about the fingerprint activated locks on the evidence lockers? Fingerprint activated locks? What kind of newfangled doohickeys are those? He's not being very helpful. He's not that good with machines, or following orders. Everyone's got their weaknesses now, don't they, Mr. Prosecutor? This one seems like trouble. Okay, Mr. Wright, he's all yours. Alright, remember that trump card that Nick mentioned at the beginning of the previous episode? In the previous episode, we're about to use that trump card here. I was at a street side saloon by the time I went down. That's technically not true, is it? Where's his fingerprints? Marshall's prints. Officer Marshall, doesn't it strike you as odd? That is, you being called in to testify like this? After all, you weren't in the security room at the time of the crime. And yet, you dragged me down here. Explain yourself, partner. It's quite simple. You left behind a very large trail at the scene. Or, to be exact, a handprint. Hm. 
Listen real good, partner. Like I said, I'm the caretaker of that crypt. I pay my respects. That is, make my rounds about once a month. It's only natural that my fingerprints would be in there. Objection! I only wish it were, officer. But you see, your fingerprints were covered in blood. Now that there is not natural. Witness, what is the meaning of this? Your bloodstained fingerprints were at the crime scene? The blood was wiped away. However, a luminol test clearly revealed this. Well, Officer Marshall? It seems to me there ain't a person in this room with a head on his shoulders. I take it you have an explanation then, Officer Marshall. About the blood-stained fingerprints? That's, that was Edgeworth and I thought it was Marshall. Very well, you may begin your testimony about your fingerprints. Found at the scene of the crime. Why don't y'all do this? Why? Why? I thought that was the end of the sentence, but I guess not. Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in that evidence room. One of them just happened to be at the same place as the bloodstained handprint. The murderer touched the locker where my fingerprint was by chance. The bloodstained and the fingerprint are completely unrelated. Or didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? See? I had nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it, huh? Hmm. The witness's explanation appears valid, although there's room for doubt. Laugh wouldn't be fun without any doubt, partner. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. This guy's hiding something. I can feel it. Now's my chance to prove it. Well, let's hope so, at least. Anyways, we have to press on the very first statement. This one right here. That's because you... How do you put it? Pay your respects once a month? Yeah, that's right. That and one more thing. That locker happens to be mine. What? What do you mean? I mean what I said. That's the locker I used when I was a detective. Locker I still use. All that's in there now, though, is a heap of broken dreams. Like, see. It'd be strange if my prints weren't all over that locker. Apparently, his fingerprint data was never removed from that locker's programming. He must have been using the fingerprint lock all this time without ever knowing it. Well, that's good to know, actually. But the murderer was wearing gloves, huh? How did you know that? Yeah, no, exactly! How do you know that? I may be a loner, but I still do my job. I keep up on the reports. There was a bloodstain at the scene thought to be left by the murderer. That's right. It was found on Detective Gumshoe's locker. However, no fingerprints were detected on that handprint. Oh yeah, I think we tried that too. Hmm. So that would mean the murderer wearing gloves happened to place their hand on top of Officer Marshall's fingerprint. That's the only logical conclusion. Are you starting to get the picture, partner? The picture? This seal of blood in the desert is just food for the buzzards. There's only one reality, and that's this. Security tape. So long as my trail ain't in there, you can't say otherwise. This isn't getting us anywhere, Mr. Wright. Please consider carefully where you're going with this cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Now then, continue your testimony, Officer Marshall. Too bad it wasn't me in that video, right, partner? Yeah, too bad. Too bad, sure. What do you mean by that? You want to tell me to do this crime, isn't that right, partner? Maybe. If so, that video is the only direct evidence you have. Objection! But that video is next to useless. It's full of blind spots. Blind spots? Places you can't see. The camera's panning back and forth. The floor isn't shown. If someone was familiar with the camera's position, they can leave the room without being caught on tape. Objection! We don't have the time for your speculations, Mr. Wright. Well, Mr. Wright, if you to show us evidence in the video that indicates Officer Marshall was present, please do so now. Show evidence or no evidence in the video. There is evidence. There is evidence there. 
We're gonna move to the bottom screen here. Well, allow me to point out your mistake. Tread carefully, Mr. Ryder. You might wind up being the one making the mistake. No, I think we're fine here. I think we're fine. So I'm actually going to fast forward here. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm gonna pause right here. So Jake Marshall says that his locker is this one right here, the one that we found the handprint on. I want you to take a careful look at this locker right here. Perfect, pristine, looks great, right? Let's fast forward a bit, yeah? Still looks good. Still looks good. Meekins is knocked out. Would you look at that? There's something sticking right out of his locker. I'm starting to slip into an, 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 an accent of my own, and I don't like that. Oof. I mean, I don't, I don't, it's not that I don't like it. I just realize I'm slipping into an accent. I usually, I like do slip in that accent sometimes. Like, if I get to an emotional high, I slip into an accent, I guess. But, uh, it's not something I normally do. But anyway, bringing our attention back to the security camera is a mistake I'm afraid you'll soon not forget, Officer Marshall. The days are short in Texas, and so are our tempers. The days are not short, dude. The sun rises at 5.30 and sets at 7.30 p.m. Like, the days are not short whatsoever. <laughs> tempers, though, I could say, I could, I could, like, kind of agree. Yes, t t some Texans do have relatively short tempers. Anyway, eight words or less. Very well. You can clearly be seen in this video. That is exactly eight words. Nicely job, Nick. Nicely job, Nick. Nice job, Nick. Exactly eight words. Not bad, partner. The key lies in a certain locker shown in the video. That locker with the white cloth sticking out. That was the witnesses, I believe. Now then, let's rewind the video a bit. Oh my god, can you rewind faster? Come on, dude! Oh, the white cloth, it's gone. What is the meaning of this, Officer Marshall? When the crime took place, the white cloth with the white cloth wasn't there. Then it suddenly appeared. Only one explanation. Officer Marshall, you were in the evidence room at the time of the crime. What's more, you opened your locker when the camera was turned away. Order, order. I see that I hold your horses. Sorry, partner, but you got the wrong man. So what if my locker was open? That doesn't mean I'm the one who opened it. The murderer needed to hide something, so he opened the locker and stuck it in. It's not my fault he happened to choose mine. Oh, Marshall, of only you. Why is everyone staring at me like I'm a wanted man? He doesn't know. He doesn't know! This guy isn't just playing dumb. He really doesn't know. Uh, I hate to rain on your parade, but you're the only person who could open that particular locker. Oh yeah? I call you a bluff. You say I opened that locker, now prove it. Sure, where's that fingerprint thing? Evidence locker, actually, is what we need to present. Present the evidence locker. Uh, fingerprint sensor? We talked about this earlier today. The lockers can only be opened by detectives they belong to. What kind of crazy talk is this? Well, Detective Gumshoe did mention something about this. In any case, the locks aren't that obvious. There's even some people on the force who don't know about the fingerprint locks. So, Sheriff, what do you have to say in eight words or less? Jake, I wouldn't... I wouldn't do that if I were you. I only got one word for you, partner. Oof. He, uh... He genuinely didn't know. That's that's kind of upsetting. I mean, that's probably, that definitely sucks for him, though. That definitely sucks for him. If this is the joke, it's the worst I've ever heard. I assure you this is no joke, Officer Marshall. Now then, please tell us what you were doing in the evidence room at the time of the crime. Olay? What? What are you doing, Judge? What is he now, a bullfight? No, really, what are you doing? That's all right, Officer Marshall. I believe we could figure out the rest from here. We can. Have a look at these floor plans. There is no place for someone to hide in the evidence room. Yet, Officer Meekins didn't see Officer Marshall. If that's so, then where was the witness? 
It seems Mr. Wright has an answer. That's right. The only possible conclusion. Well then, let's hear it. Where was Officer Marshall at the time of the crime? Okay, we're on the bottom screen here. But what we have to present is this spot with the label, with the V label, where the quote unquote victim was standing. Hey, Officer Marshall was standing right here. There, but that's, that's where the victim Detective Goodman was. Correct. Unless the man was a Detective Goodman. I believe the victim in this video is Officer Marshall. It was you dressed up like Detective Goodman. Objection! But that's preposterous. Officer Meekin's a witness to Detective at the scene of the crime. Once he saw the man's face, he'd know for sure. Objection! May I point out, though, that Officer Meekins did not know Detective Goodman. He also testified about the man's reaction when confronted. I'm about to sneeze. There we go. Excuse me. When I been why I whoa okay my brain just didn't work right there. When I entered the evidence room, I asked him to show him his card, sir. Yes. And how did Detective Goodman respond? He suddenly pulled a knife on me. Something about the officer's story puzzled me. If the man had his ID card, why did he just show it? Yes, he would have needed it to enter the evidence room, so he must have been carrying it. The answer is simple. He couldn't show it. As you can see, Detective Goodman's picture was on his ID card. Oh, I get it. If he showed that, his cover would have been blown. Officer Meekins would have realized the man wasn't Detective Goodman. Do you have anything to say to this, Officer Marshall? You got quite an imagination, partner. You got a term for that. It's called circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence? He's still denying it. You're gonna have to do better than that to bring it. Unless you have hard evidence proving I dressed up as the victim. Hmm. I can't say that I particularly care for your uncooperative disposition. I can't say that I care for your beer, but you don't see me complaining. That's the second time you've brought that up, bro. Anyway, evidence without a, that proves without a shadow of a doubt that Officer Marshall dressed up as the victim. Well, who am I kidding? I don't have anything like that. I can see the fear in your eyes, partner. Seems you're the one who couldn't take the desert, desert heat. Desert heat? Yeah. This can't be happening. It's so obvious he's the one. What can I do? <laughs> Miles? It looks like your lap of experience has finally been exposed. I'll pass on to you what someone told me when I was just starting out. When you've run into a wall with no place to go, return to the basics. The basics. For me, that would be what Mia used to tell me. Phoenix, try thinking outside the box. I shouldn't look for proof that Officer Marshall was in disguise. But rather, I should look for evidence that came about because he was in disguise. Why do you think this locker was open in the first place? What do you mean? There's no reason for Officer Marshall to open his locker at the time of the crime. Yet he did, despite the chance he might be discovered later as it has been. Which means he didn't originally plan to open his locker. According to the defense's argument, Officer Jake Marshall dressed up as Detective Goodman at the scene of the, at the time of the crime. Then, after the crime was committed, he opened his own locker for some unknown reason. The fact that a white cloth is sticking out of the locker seems to indicate that he opened it in order to put the cloth inside. So, just what exactly is this piece of cloth? Perhaps, perhaps the video is the key to all our unanswered questions. I don't have any evidence, so this video is my only shot. Marshall, you seem quiet here. All right, we're, we're back on the bottom screen and we're looking at that videotape. Please show us why the witness had to open his locker. We're actually gonna fast forward here. Okay, Goodman is in. That flag is not helping out, is it? Um. Okay, we're just gonna watch, because we are supposed to 
There's a small part where I'm supposed to pause. God, I don't remember. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, I have to present that. All right, we're back down here. For some reason, you disguised yourself as Detective Goodman and entered the evidence room, so I don't know what, to what end, yet. Yet? However, something unexpected happened. Officer Meekins barged in on you. When he asked to show your ID card, you pulled a knife on him. However, Officer Meekins panicked, and the white coat you were wearing was soiled with blood. A bloody white coat. You couldn't just walk out like that. So you hid the coat in your locker. Not bad, Podna. So do you admit that, or... Do, do you admit that? Now then, Officer Marshall. Are you ready to tell us the truth? Looks like I underestimated y'all. I hope you're happy now, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, if you were only half as persistent then as you are today, we all wouldn't have to be here now, now would we? Officer Marshall, tell the court what you did. All of it. All right. Seems the time has come. Okay. Let's hear it then. I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. I stole the detective's ID and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out and managed to escape. I knew Jerry's wouldn't be caught in the camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 515. So the supposed victim was really you. But there's one thing I still don't understand. Traces of a large quantity of blood were found on the floor of the evidence room. If no one was murdered, then how could that be? Officer Meekins managed to cut his own hand. My guess is he's the donor. It was way too much blood for such a small donation. But that's a different problem to solve another day, yeah? We gotta press every single one of these statements. Every single one you gotta press. When you say it, you mean... Do you even have to ask, partner? That's a line incident. Two years have passed since that case was closed. It was going to completely end with a transfer of that day. Not if I have anything to do with it. That incident's not over. But what did you hope to accomplish by sneaking into the evidence room? When the case is closed, only that case's lead detective can look through the evidence. I wanted to have a look at it myself one more time. No matter what the cost. I don't care what anyone says, partner, that case is mine. But Officer Marshall wasn't in charge of that investigation. Why does he care so much about it? So that day was my last chance. That's why. Stole his ID card. Why did you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman? If I didn't make it look like Goodman was carrying out the evidence transfer, I'd be arrested for stealing evidence, which wouldn't get me anywhere. So you did it to fool the security camera. And the detective's ID card? I stole that the morning of the incident. So that really was why Detective Goodman started filing out the lost item report. I returned his ID card. I left it on the floor in the prosecutor's office parking lot. The ID card I found was left there by Officer Marshall. So, essentially, you managed to succeed despite your lack of foresight. What do you mean? I mean, the fingerprint activated lock, of course. No matter how well you disguise yourself, you can't change your fingerprints. Under normal circumstances, you wouldn't have been able to open that locker yourself. But he could because a rubber glove just happened to get stuck in that door. That means Detective Goodman must have opened that locker before Officer Marshall. What? Remember when I said this is a convoluted case? This is a convoluted case. It is complicated. You pull a knife on Officer Meekin to try to drive him off? Let's just say I was a little surprised. I only planned on being in the evidence room for no more than five minutes. I didn't think anyone would actually come in during that short time. Officer Meekins. 
certainly is one in a million type of person. He's staying a detective for an intruder demanding to show his ID. I'll have to think a little more about his rays this year. When did Edgeworth get so much influence? Anyway, he threw himself at me and I ended up cutting him slightly. Sorry that to turn out that way. With me knocking him out and everything. By the way, what happened to your knife? Oh, you mean this one? I don't know what to say. <laughs> so you knocked out Officer Meekins and... Managed to escape. Press that. So you did your research beforehand. Those who go into the desert under the player don't live long, partner. I didn't think it would make a difference, though. Security tape is erased every six hours. If all had gone as planned, no footage would have been left. However, you bloodied your coat in your struggle with Officer Meekins. If someone was in the security room when I came out, the jig would have been up. I opened my locker and stashed it in there. What was Officer Meekins doing during that time? What else? He was sleeping like a baby. So, what you're saying is, on that day... There wasn't any murder. Oh, that's... I want to go back and press that. But the blood found on the scene certainly indicates the crime took place. What are you, blind? The victim shown on that tape is me, and I'm not dead yet, partner. So, you stole the evidence from the locker? Actually, no, I didn't. Why not? When I opened the locker, the evidence was already gone. What? Mr. Edgeworth, where is that evidence? It's still missing, Your Honor. Detective Goodman's locker was already empty. Someone else stole the evidence. Officer Marshall, may I ask you this one thing? Far away, partner. It's a free country. Just remember, I'm also free to decide whether or not the answer. Why did you do this? Stealing a detective's ID? Injuring a police officer? This is no small offense. Moreover, you are an officer yourself. This will have serious consequences. It can't just be forgiven with a simple cut in salary. Not that salary cuts are even a valid solution. Like I said, this isn't your case. This one is mine. And I'll do anything it takes to get an answer I'm satisfied with. Hmm. The witness has an unusual amount of zeal. Let's hear more. I can't just forget the SL9 incident. You know why? Well, we actually do have to present something on this case. Uh, on the statement, I should say, not on this case. We have to present the SL9 incident files. Before I do that, though, uh, we're gonna check these. I'm actually going to look, show the bottom screen here. Incident SL9, perpetrator Joe Dark, serial murder sentence death, victims here, Edward Jones, Edith Kirby, Jeb Bates, Jason Knight, Rachel Moss, and Neil Marshall. Coincidental same name, huh? Head prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, witnesses Lana Sky and Emma Sky, Damon Grant and Lana Sky were the investigators, head investigator was Bruce Goodman, Jake and Angel were involved in investigating as well. But Neil Marshall, that's a that's a significant name here. Let's present that to you. Officer Marshall, I think I understand. I think I know why you care so much about the SL9 incident. Sounds like you've been sipping too much cactus juice, partner. I have the SL9 incident file here. The name Marshall is mentioned in here. In a list of murder victims. Neil Marshall. Are you related to this man? Neil Marshall? Yeah, I'm sure you've heard the name. Two years ago, he received the same lousy prosecutor award you got. What? A prosecutor? He must be talking about the King of Prosecutors Award. Now I remember. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He handled the SL9 case before I did. That's right. He was killed. And the case fell into your hands. But what's his relation to you? He was my brother. 
He was investigating the murders with Damon Gone, the then tip deputy chief of police. The group of detectives I was a part of worked under them. We were desperate to prosecute the killer. Joe Doc. My brother fought Doc and was killed. That was the first time Doc left behind any evidence. That was all we needed. He was arraigned and incarcerated. The case finally closed. At least, according to the public records. What do you mean? My brother couldn't have been killed by Joe Doc. I knew my brother better than anyone. No one could have beaten him in a fight. And that's it? That's the reason for your insane actions? There's more to my brother's death than what the records say. No matter how much you try to hide it, you can't fool me. Well, at least one thing is for certain. Now we know what happened at the police department on the day of the crime. That was the last day the SL9 case could be reopened. Not satisfied with this resolution, Officer Marshall planned to seal the evidence. Disguising himself as Detective Goodman, he entered the evidence room. Officer Meekins confronted him, so he rendered him unconscious and fled. Yes, this mystery has finally been cleared up. No murder took place at the police department that day. The things that happened by chance never cease to amaze. At exactly the same time as the murder at the prosecutor's office. This fake murder was going on at the police department. That is a crazy coincidence. Chance? It's gotta be more than that. So if no one was murdered at the police department on the day of the crime, that means the murder in the prosecutor office parking lot was the real one. Which, in turn, means only one person could have committed the crime. Chief Prosecutor Lana Scott. But, but wait! A verdict wasn't reached in yesterday's trial! Which is why we examined the incident at the police department today. But... There is only one reason the defendant was not convicted yesterday. There yet remained the mystery of the simultaneous murder at the police department. It seems to me, this boy's got the draw on you, partner. All of the mysteries at the police department have been resolved, no doubt about it. Our sole murder took place at the prosecutor's office. The only suspect is Lana Skye. The testimony of one Miss Angel Starr is completely incontestable. If you have a response, make it a single word or less. Ah! I guess that's a word? Is that a word? I rest my case. It seems this trial has reached its conclusion. There's no room for doubt. Well done, Mr. Wright. Thanks to you, I didn't need to waste my time disproving the alleged murder at the police department. There's no doubt what I proved today is true. The apparent murder on security cameras tape really was fake. But I didn't realize that I would end up proving Lana guilty. Now then, the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds a defendant. Emma! Y Your Honor, wait! Emma! The defense has an objection! A scientific objection! Right? What do you mean, right? Mr. Wright, are you this girl's guardian? Your Honor? Oh, uh, in a sense. Please, Your Honor, all I'm asking for is a minute of your time. Please hear me out. Mr. Edgeworth, please. I don't want to leave any loose ends. You want a minute? I'll give you three. All right, Emma, what do you got for us? I, I was kind of in shock. I mean, finding out that the SL9 incident referred to the joke. Now she mentions it. The names of both Sky Sisters were in that file. But that's when I figured it out. I mean, what Officer Marshall was trying to do that day. So I knew his fingerprint had nothing to do with the crime. That left only one thing. The other handprint. You mean the traces of blood found on the top of Gumshoe's locker. 
but no fingerprints were found on it, right? No, but I figured if I examined it scientifically, I'd be sure to find a clue. So, I ran over there and looked at it again. So did you find something? Um, no! Huh? Sorry, I guess I'm not that much of a scientific investigator after all. Um, is that all? Please don't be mad, I'm just a high school student. And I'm just an attorney. But Mr. Wright, those traces of bloods are the only clue we have. If we can't find something wrong with them... Please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. If anyone can save Lana, it's you. Me? Oh, boy. Time's up. Now then, Mr. Wright, with regard to the incident at the police department, does any reasonable doubt remain? Um... It appears the defense is troubled by the other blood marks. Looking at the floor plants, a handprint was discovered around here. Is there a problem with this? Mr. Wright! I'm sorry I can't be of more use. But still, if you can't find anything wrong with that blood mark, Lana will be... Please answer my question, Mr. Wright. You don't have all day. Y yes, Your Honor. If I ever need to concentrate, it's now. What could be wrong with that hamper on Detective Gumshoe's locker? Could there be something I'm missing? I object or there's no problem. There's something we're missing! I object! Objection! This hamper left at the crime scene clearly shows a contradiction. The only thing that seems clear is your grasping, Mr. Wright. You've been staring pretty intently at those four plants. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Yes, this is strange. Take a good look at these floor plants. Something is missing. Missing? You mean something hasn't been drawn on them? Yes, something that, when drawn, will completely change the meaning of the blood mark. Let us pray the defense isn't simply trying to buy time. Very well, Mr. Wright. With all this evidence here, there's got to be something I could use. The question is, which item can prove something is missing in the floor plans? The blue badger panel! If y'all remember, in, in that security video, that blue badger was, like, right in front of Gumshoe's locker. There was no way that handprint could have gotten there during the time of that crime. Take that! What about that piece of plywood? The Blue Badger, mascot of the police force. Defender of <laughs> Why are you introducing this like it's some sort of like... Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. Please look at the floor plans of the crime scene. The Blue Badger is not here. So? So, watch what happens when we put him in. This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. Well? Well, what? That's right. So long as the blue badger is dancing here, it would be impossible to place a handprint at this spot on the locker. Poor Marshall. Actually, you know, you know what? Not poor Marshall. We're fine here. So that means... Uh, just what exactly does that mean? It means it can't be done. What are you saying? The traces were undeniably found on that locker. Don't look at me. I didn't put it there. Mr. Wright, think it through scientifically. Emma, on that afternoon, Officer Meekins was the one who brought the blue badger to the evidence room, right? After he put it down, it would be impossible to leave a handprint on the locker. So that must mean this blood mark was left there before the blue badger was brought in? Just one moment. I will not allow such far-fetched balderdash in my room, in my courtroom. It may sound far-fetched, Your Honor, but it's the only possible explanation. On February 21st, in the police department's evidence room, blood was spilled not once, but twice! But how? One time was captured on this tape, taken by a security camera. Officer Meekins cut his hand, from which a trivial, amo trivial amount of blood fell. The problem is the other time. 
someone bled prior to the struggle shown on this tape. It had to have been... It had to have been... Detective Goodman when he was really murdered. Objection. That's ridiculous. I refuse to accept your absurd claims. The murder portrayed in the security tape has been proven to be a fake. However, that does not explain why the blood mark found the blood mark found on the locker. Objection. So then, assuming this murder you purport really happened, when did it take place? I demand you show evidence that proves when it occurred. When did the first incident occur? To summarize, the defense claims that prior to Officer Meekins being cut by Jake Marshall, who was posing as Detective Goodman, another incident took place at the evidence room. That's right! The blood mark on the locker proves this. Very well, then tell us. When did this first incident occur? As Mr. Edgeworth said, proof must be presented. Proof that shows when the murder took place. There's only one piece of evidence that could show that. Now then, will the defense please present its evidence? What shows when the first crime took place? The ID card record! The ID card record! If the crime took place inside the evidence room, then the killer would have had to enter it. And in order to do so, an ID card would have been required. An ID card? Oh! The ID card record! Officer Meekins brought the blue badger panel into the evidence room at, let's see here, 4.50 p.m. If the crime took place before that time, then it would be 4.40 p.m. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, Miles Edgeworth! Just what if, okay, hold on, Nick, oh, Miles didn't do it. Miles didn't do, hold on, hey, whoa, Miles didn't do this. Drop the act, witness. It doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out it couldn't have been me. <laughs> nope, I ain't getting it. Well, I'm afraid I don't understand either. It's clear from the luminol test that the blood was there. However, when the second crime took place, both Officer Meekins and Officer Marshall failed to notice the blood. That means the blood from the first crime was wiped away by the real murderer. I would have had just ten minutes to murder the victim, carry his body away, and clean up the blood. Unfortunately, that's physically impossible. That would mean the crime must have taken place before Mr. Edgeworth entered the evidence room. Let's look at the chart again. There's only one other card number remaining. Seven sevens in a row. Talk about a lucky number. Wait, that doesn't make sense. How could Detective Goodman have entered the evidence room? Since there's no record of his card being used beforehand, he must have entered along with the real murderer. That's the only plausible explanation. He went in with 7777777. Mr. Edgeworth, please look into this ASAP. Find out whose ID number this 7777777. That's one seven too many, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I'm unable to look up the owner of that ID card. At least, at present. What? Explain yourself, son. The ID number 77777777 belongs to a rank, to someone with a rank of captain or higher. Someone who is a so-called executive officer. We don't have the authority to inquire into such a person's identity. Objection! But that's ridiculous! Just how- I'm not finished talking, Mr. Wright. There is one situation in which we can be granted such authority. If an official charge is filed against an executive is accepted. An official charge. You're all alike, aren't you? You have cover-ups and your forgeries. That's how the prosecutor's office operates. I mean, I take pride in my work, Officer Marshall. I would appreciate it if you kept your slander to yourself. Slander, is it? Okay. Let me ask a question. Yes. No, not to you. To her, the defendant scene over there. Your own little executive. Uh, Lana? Don't be stupid. She's been charged with murder. Of course we've looked into look up her ID number. And it's not seven 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 seven. Don't play me for a fool, partner. That's not what I wanna ask. All I wanna know is one thing. 
about that incident. The US online incident? Answer me this, Chief Prosecutor. In that trial two years ago, did you really only use legitimate evidence? Lana? Do you need the witness to repeat his question, Chief Prosecutor? I heard him fine, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, I was in charge of the prosecution for that trial. At the time, we... Occasionally, we felt powerlessness of the law. At least, I did. L Lana! I became a prosecutor in order to suppress crime with the law. But before I realized it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. Defendant, just what are you saying? I'll ask you again, Chief Prosecutor. During that trial two years ago, did you really present all the evidence in court? Can you look me and investigate in that crime in the eye and say that you did? Chief Prosecutor, you didn't. I don't have to, Officer Marshall. Why won't you answer him? Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. But Lana! Even if it involved forging evidence. See? That's what I'm talking about. No. No! Ooh, everyone's kind of in a ruckus. Oh, okay. Everyone's kind of going crazy right there, isn't it? Lana's remark caused such a stir. The chaos in the prison could not be quelled. The conclusion of the trial would have to wait until the following day. So, Lana just admitted to forging evidence in order to get her guilty verdict for the Joe Dark killings, for the SL9 incident, which I guess Miles was unknowingly... Oh, Miles unknowingly used that forged evidence to get Joe Dark that guilty verdict. And so Joe Dark was um, convicted by false evidence and then sentenced to execution also by false evidence, by forged evidence. That's a big scandal. That is a huge deal. That is a big problem. I like... There's a lot wrong with that situation. There is a lot wrong there. But, I guess the one good thing that came from that, we have another day of investigation, and then our final day of trial now. So, we gotta use this last day to figure out what exactly happened during that SL9 incident, I suppose. Well, not even SL... We need to figure out what ha We do need to figure out what happened during SL9, but we also need to figure out, um what really happened in this case with Goodman. But that is all for next time. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. Like, subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye!